The story of humanity approaches its climax, and many wonder, what awaits us? In times of confusion and deception, where voices multiply, the truth seems to slip through our fingers. What Jesus predicted in Matthew 24 echoes louder than ever, see to it that no one deceives you. Society is in shambles, and questions about the end times are more present than ever. But what if all of this is part of a grand plan? Imagine a future where biblical promises come true. What will become of the world? What happens to those who believe? The biblical narrative presents us with events ranging from the rapture of the church to judgments and renewals. Nature cries out for change. And you, are you ready to understand what is to come? With every step we take, the story unfolds, revealing fascinating and challenging aspects. Prepare yourself, for the journey ahead is more than just a sequence of events. It is an opportunity to reflect on eternity and the relationship we have with our Creator. What will you do with this information? Let's explore together. Jesus' Warning About Deception It is interesting to note how, throughout history, many people have been led astray by seductive promises and messages that sound pleasant but are actually far from the truth. In the prophetic sermon of Matthew 24, Jesus warns us about the importance of being alert to these deceptions and false prophecies. He knew that confusion could reign among those seeking the truth, and therefore, he left us this clear and direct warning. Discernment, in this context, becomes an essential skill for Christians who wish to remain faithful. Jesus not only gives a warning but also teaches us to seek the truth in the scriptures and not to be swayed by everything we hear. The world is full of voices clamoring for our attention, and often, these voices are distorted or misinterpreted. The ability to discern what is true from what is false is a responsibility that every Christian must take on. After all, it is not just a matter of faith but a commitment to the truth that is fundamental to spiritual life. Moreover, this issue of deception is not something confined to the past. Deceptions and false prophecies continue to emerge in our days, and Christians need to be prepared to face them. This involves continuous study of the scriptures, a life of prayer, and the pursuit of a deeper relationship with God. Only then can we recognize the voice of the true shepherd and not get lost amid so many distractions. The prophetic sermon is a call to vigilance. Jesus exhorts us to be alert and not easily influenced by words that do not align with the message of the gospel. This warning is not meant to scare us but to encourage us to seek the truth diligently and to stand firm in the faith. In a world where truth is often distorted, Christ's appeal remains relevant and necessary. Finally, deception is a subtle trap, and it is easy to fall into it if we are not attentive. Therefore, the call to vigilance is an invitation to responsibility. Every Christian must commit to seeking the truth, delving into the scriptures, and discerning wisely the voices we hear. In this way, we can remain firm in the faith and avoid the deceptions that surround us. Final Events of History When we talk about the final events of history, we enter a territory that provokes both curiosity and fear. The chronology of these events is fundamental for us to understand how everything connects and culminates in what the Bible describes as the end times. One of the most significant milestones of this transition is the second coming of Christ, which promises to be a moment of great revelation and transformation. For many, this is a hope that lights the way, but also a reminder of the seriousness of spiritual life. As we approach this event, it is crucial to understand what is at stake. The Bible gives us clues about what to expect, from signs that precede Christ's coming to the preparation we must have in our hearts. It is a moment that should not be treated with disdain or indifference but with a spirit of expectation and readiness. The transition to eternity is not just a change of state but a new reality that unfolds with all its implications. The importance of being prepared for these events cannot be underestimated. The Christian life is a continuous invitation to sanctification, to seeking a closer relationship with God, and to being willing to listen to His voice. When the final events unfold, it will be a time when the faith of many will be tested. 
Those who have dedicated themselves to growing in faith and preparing for this moment will have a special place in the divine narrative. On the other hand, the expectation of the marriage of the Lamb, which will be celebrated in this context of final events, is a hope that brings joy. The union between Christ and His Church symbolizes the culmination of a relationship that has been cultivated over the centuries. This celebration is not just an event but a milestone that reminds us of God's love for us and the promise of an eternity by His side. The transition to eternity, therefore, is not just a matter of time but of relationship. It is an invitation for all of us, so that, while we await the fulfillment of these promises, we can dedicate ourselves to living in a way that reflects the light of Christ in our lives. In this way, we will be ready not only to witness the final events but to actively participate in the glorious realization of the divine plan. The Marriage of the Lamb The Marriage of the Lamb is an event surrounded by deep and symbolic meanings, as described in Revelation 19. Imagine the scene, the church, represented as a radiant bride, prepares to unite with Christ, the Bridegroom. This union is not just a festive moment but a symbol of the intimate relationship God desires to have with His people. The bride, dressed in fine white clothes, represents the purity and holiness expected of all those who surrender to Christ. Therefore, the preparation for this event is not trivial, it is a call for the faithful to seek sanctification in their daily lives. Sanctification, in turn, is not just an isolated act but a continuous process. It is an invitation for every Christian to deepen their relationship with God, seeking a life of prayer, study of the Word, and fellowship with other brothers and sisters in the faith. Thinking about the marriage of the Lamb leads us to reflect on the state of our own hearts. Are we ready for this meeting? Preparation involves not only an inner transformation but also an active commitment to God's mission in the world. The joy of this moment is palpable, and it is a time of celebration, where victory over sin and death is finally recognized. Just as in a wedding, where love is celebrated, the marriage of the Lamb symbolizes the culmination of God's love for His Church. This event is a milestone that reminds us that the story does not end in despair but in hope and redemption. Therefore, as we contemplate this image, we are encouraged to live with expectation, knowing that one day we will stand before our Bridegroom, celebrating eternity together. Moreover, the importance of this marriage is also a call to unity. The Bride, composed of all believers, is a testimony of the diversity and unity that the Gospel promotes. Regardless of our differences, we are called to unite around the love of Christ. This union brings a sense of belonging and purpose, reminding us that we are not alone on the journey of faith. Finally, the marriage of the Lamb offers us unwavering hope. In a world full of uncertainties and anxieties, this promise of eternal union with Christ strengthens us. By living with this hope, we are motivated to act in a way that reflects the character of Christ in our lives, seeking to be light in the midst of darkness. Thus, preparation for this marriage is not just a future expectation but a reality that shapes our present. The Second Coming of Christ and Armageddon the Second Coming of Christ is one of the most anticipated events in the Christian narrative, and its importance cannot be underestimated. Many Christians believe that this coming will be a moment of justice and restoration. Christ will return not only to claim His Bride but also to establish His Kingdom definitively. This return is often associated with the Battle of Armageddon, a moment of confrontation between the forces of good and evil, which will have profound prophetic significance. It is essential to understand the distinction between the rapture of the Church and the Second Coming. While the rapture is seen as an event in which the faithful will be taken up to meet the Lord in the air, the Second Coming is the moment when Christ will descend to earth to reign. This marks a crucial point in the history of salvation, where divine justice will be fully manifested. Many wonder what that day will be like, the expectation is of a glorious return, where every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. The Battle of Armageddon, in turn, represents a climax in the spiritual struggle between the forces of good and evil. This is not just a physical conflict but a spiritual battle that reflects the eternal struggle that unfolds in the lives of each of us. 
When we think of Armageddon, we are led to reflect on our own inner battle against sin and temptation. What is at stake is more than a confrontation at the end of time, it is a call for us to stand with Christ in our lives. Moreover, the prophetic significance of this battle is a warning to all of us. It reminds us that history is not being written randomly but has a divine purpose. Each of us must be aware of our role in this grand plan. The scriptures encourage us to remain firm in the faith, even in the face of adversities and temptations that surround us. This is a time of vigilance and preparation, where our trust in God must be unwavering. Finally, the second coming of Christ offers us hope and a glorious future. In a world full of uncertainties and chaos, this promise reminds us that we are not alone and that history will culminate in a triumphant conclusion. The expectation of this return should motivate us to live lives of integrity, love, and service, knowing that we are collaborating with God in the building of His kingdom, both now and in eternity. The Great Earthquake and the Judgment of the Nations Imagine a day that will become a milestone in human history, a day when the earth trembles with unprecedented force, what many call the Great Earthquake. This catastrophe will not be just a simple geological alteration but a clear sign of divine judgment upon the nations. The biblical accounts give us an apocalyptic vision of this event, emphasizing that nothing we have seen compares to this manifestation of God's power. It is as if creation itself is preparing for a moment of revelation, where the structures that sustain the world will be shaken. In the Valley of Jehoshaphat, the scene becomes even more intense. It is in this place that the nations will gather to be judged. The idea of a judgment of the nations may seem like a distant concept, but the Bible assures us that this event is not just symbolic. Every nation will have to account for its actions, especially in relation to Israel, which occupies a central role in the biblical narrative. The judgment is not just about behaviors but about the stance of each nation before the truth and justice of God. It is interesting to note how responsibility toward Israel is a recurring theme in the scriptures. The nations that supported or persecuted God's chosen people will face direct consequences. This raises questions about how nations behave today in relation to Israel and what that means for the future. Will the decisions made now have eternal repercussions? The biblical answer seems to be a resounding yes. The choices made in the present will echo throughout eternity. Furthermore, this great earthquake symbolizes not only physical destruction but also spiritual transformation. The destruction of the structures that sustain humanity can be seen as a necessary cleansing for the new creation to come. The idea that something new arises from desolation is a common theme in the scriptures, and in this context, the earthquake can be interpreted as a harbinger of renewal. Therefore, while many will panic, there is an underlying hope that something grand is coming. Lastly, the judgment of the nations in the Valley of Jehoshaphat is not an isolated event but a part of the larger divine plan. It reminds us that, although we live in a world full of injustices and inequalities, there will come a day when justice will prevail. This day of judgment will bring to light the truth about the intentions and actions of each nation, showing that, in the end, what really matters is how we live and how we treat one another, especially in relation to those whom God has called his people. The Fate of the Antichrist and Satan When we talk about the fate of the Antichrist and Satan, we enter a dark yet essential narrative in the story of salvation. The Antichrist, a figure representing the ultimate opposition to Christ, will have his judgment decreed. The Bible is clear in stating that he and the false prophet will be cast into the lake of fire, a symbol of eternal condemnation. This is not just a momentary defeat, it is the closure of a cycle of deception and rebellion against God that lasted for centuries. The fall of the Antichrist is a relief for many souls who suffered under his influence. However, we cannot forget Satan, the adversary himself. After the defeat of the Antichrist, he will be imprisoned for a thousand years. This imprisonment is not just a security measure but an opportunity for creation to experience a time of peace and justice. It is a moment when the influence of evil will be removed, allowing humanity to live in a state of harmony with God. 
This expectation of a millennium of peace is a theme that gives hope and encouragement to the faithful. During this period, many will wonder what it truly means to live without the presence of evil. It is a chance for humanity to experience true freedom, a freedom never seen before. The absence of Satan will allow people to turn to God in a more authentic and profound way. This time of reflection and spiritual redirection will be crucial for humanity's preparation for what is to come. The imprisonment of Satan also has an element of restorative justice. The idea that evil will be contained and that truth will prevail is a fundamental principle in the biblical narrative. Throughout history, many have questioned God's goodness in the face of pain and suffering, this event serves as a reminder that God does not ignore evil, but that in his time, he will bring justice. The victory over evil is an essential part of the story of salvation, and the fate of the Antichrist and Satan is a symbol of this victory. Finally, the condemnation of the Antichrist and Satan is an act of hope for all those who long for justice and vindication. It is a reminder that, despite the difficulties and deception that permeate the world, there is a divine plan in motion that will culminate in the restoration of all things. This outcome represents not only the defeat of evil but the confirmation that light will always prevail over darkness. And so, dear ones, we come to the end of this first part on, the end of history and the beginning of eternity. What an incredible journey, isn't it? As we reflect on these events, it is crucial that each of us asks ourselves, are we truly ready for what is to come? The Bible warns us about deceptions and distractions, but it also offers us hope and a glorious future with Christ. Think about this, how can we better prepare for that great day? What can we do to be light amid so much darkness? Remember, every action counts, every word preached is a seed planted. And, of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell so you don't miss any updates. Our next meeting will be even deeper, where we will continue to explore the chronology of events that will shape eternity. In the meantime, how about sharing this video with friends and family? Let's spread together the message of hope and transformation that only Jesus can bring. And don't forget, the Word of God is living and effective. May it light our way until the glorious day of His coming. Stay with God.